Welcome to another edition of the Sim Racing Garage. I'm Barry Rowland. In this episode, we'll be reviewing a rally style sequential shifter from the guys at SG Racing. Made from heavy duty aluminum plates and sporting a 15 millimeter thick shifting lever, this unit promises to deliver a great shifting experience. Time to put it through the SRG's review process and see how it does. So, let's get to it. Now for our closer look segment on the sequential shifter from the guys at SG Racing. First off, when you take this out of the box, it feels very substantial and solid. Just a solidly built shifter. It's all metal construction on here. So it's one of those, like I said, one of those things when you get out of the box, you say, well, this is going to last. You know, this is going to have a good feel to it if you can securely mount it to something. Now, this comes with a mount on the bottom. And we'll talk more about mounting later on. But this is a 6.25 millimeter thick plate of aluminum, which gives it, again, a very substantial feel. And it adds weight to the shifter itself. Now, when I took this plate off to weigh it, the shifter itself came out two pounds and five ounces without the bracket, or just over a kilogram, if you will. And when I put the bracket on with the shifter on the weight, or the rather the scales, it came out to two pounds, 13 and a half ounces, and 1.3 kilograms. So yeah, definitely adds some mass to the shifter itself. But the shifter itself is built in such a way that, yeah, as soon as you pull it out, you can tell this is something that's going to, should last you a very long time. All right, let's talk about the plates that are actually make up the body of this shifter. These things are eight millimeters thick, each of one of these plates. So very, very tough brackets to be mounting to the side or rather plates to be giving you structural integrity in the shifter. It's just one of those things that when I pull it out of the box, I was going, geez, this thing's built like a tank. And it is. And even the, the sandwich metal in here, the spacer or spreader, if you will, that's 10 millimeters thick, right? Then over here, the lever itself is 15 millimeter thick stock aluminum bar in here. And it's 25 millimeters wide. So yeah, this is, like I said, no fear of any damage or breaking anything in here, I think. And I, I like, kind of like the stylistic holes it has in here. And they have been counter beveled right there. You can see the bevels in them. And we have some bevels in our plate down there too for some flathead screws. But we'll talk about that when we get to the mounting part. But yeah, just in hand, it feels very substantial. And I'm actually can, can put it up like this and kind of pull down on it a little bit. And you can, I don't know if you can hear the clicking, but you see it's not moving a whole lot, is it? Not moving much at all either way. So there's not going to be a lot of, yeah. So basically it looks like we're going to just kind of be slapping this thing when I'm using it because it doesn't take much throw to get this thing to shift. And actually when I first got it, I, I checked that out. I thought it might be too tight at first. So I contacted the manufacturer and said, no, that's, that's the way it comes and that's the way it was designed to work. And so, yeah, I mean, if that's the way to design it. And he said that everybody likes it that way. So I haven't driven it yet, so I have to put it on the rig before I make a final decision on my personal likes or dislikes about it. But yeah, as far as that's concerned, that's, I really don't have any problem with it either way, probably, once I'm using it. Now, on the aesthetics of part of this, this is nice because we have the black anodization over here on the lever. We've got the nice knurled grip up here. Now, this grip itself is 30 millimeters in diameter. So everything is just big and beefy, and it's a solid piece. Let's see if I can get this off of here. Let's take a look at this thing. Yeah, it looks like it has a two-way type of grub or set screw type of situation going on there for the mount. And yeah, this is a solid piece of aluminum here. And you can see the machining on the top there. And it's got this nice knurling on it. Oh, well, that's showing up in the camera. But yeah, it's, it's, it's got that feel that really grips your hand, your skin. And of course a glove if you're going to use a glove for, for actually doing your shifting. So I, I like the feel of this very much. It just has a nice, I think 30 mil, 25 mil somewhere in there is a good radius to have or diameter to have on a shifter. And yeah, it just, it feels natural when you have it in hand and you're making your shifts. Of course, I'll probably just be slapping this and, you know, either way when you're actually using this in anger and driving the car fast. We have some carbon fiber it uh, looks like a, kind of the stick-on decal type material, but it is a thicker type. You can actually feel the grain of the fake carbon fiber there. Of 
course, it might be some kind of a real carbon fiber sheet. Can't be sure, but yeah, there it is. And I like the way they have this SG Racing logo on here. It's actually engraved. It's not just a sticker. Piece of aluminum bar of it they put in here. And this has actually been etched into that. Engraved, actually, not etched, but engraved. So it's thick. You can feel it all along here. Of course, I've got it all messed up with my finger rubbing on it because I liked it so much. <laughs> All right, so what else can we talk about here? We've got some acorn nuts here, that's what we call them, for supporting the internals in here. You can see the switch, and we'll see more of this when we get to the look inside segment. But you can see there's a roller switch in here. See how far I can get this without hitting the car camera here. It's got a little roller in there that actually rolls along the lever, obviously, when we're manipulating it, and it makes it go back and forth. I don't wonder if I can get my little thing in here and make it move. There it goes. So you can see how that's working. And it seems to be have it has more play in it than what I'm getting when I'm shifting it. So you probably could adjust this for a little bit more throw, but I imagine there wouldn't be much in there. But again, we'll be able to see that better in detail when we get to our look inside segment. Now you can see also here that we have a nine pin plug and that plugs into a box, which I imagine is the USB conversion board in here, right there. And then we have our USB type A that goes into the PC itself. All right, so I guess that's about it as far as, oh, one more thing. You do get, they do give you some M8 T-nuts, and they are spring ball units, but they don't have the tab on the top for centering in the channel, and also some flathead screws that will fit in the bracket here. But again, we'll talk about mounting in another segment. Now for our look inside segment on the SG Racing Sequential Shifter. First off, carefully turn this up. You can see I've taken the aluminum plate off, the eight millimeter thick aluminum plate. And yeah, this is a very sturdy shifter the way this thing is built. And I left this on so I could show you the washer in here, bushing if you will, that reduces the friction between when you're actually manipulating the shifter bar back and forth on the aluminum surface itself. I'm gonna take that off so we can see what's going on behind it. And we can see here, let me get this out of the way. We can see here that there is a bronze bushing in there that the bolt is riding on. Now this is a, again, the socket head cap, but you can see it is a shanked bolt. So it's all smooth right through there. So it's actually rotating on that smooth shank part, which gives it a smooth motion. Very well built. I mean, when you pull this open, you can see this is well thought out and well built piece here. We have the switches here. And again, they have these little rollers on them. You see a little roller there. And the switches don't go that far in. Let me do it right there. You could probably adjust this to go with a little bit more throw. But yeah, I'm not sure if I would even bother because the switches can't move it so far. And you don't want to obviously be ramming this aluminum bar into the switch and armature here and cause it to, to bind up against the housing of the switch itself. As far as the switches go, I don't see any branding on them but I can give you a quick look at it so you can at least see what the information is on it. All right, I'm being careful here because the only thing to fall apart. And on the bottom here, you can see that they've actually milled out this solid aluminum bar to act as a spacer between these two springs. And the springs are what, of course, are giving us our tension when we're pushing this back and forth. And these are very strong springs and a lot of tension on it. You saw what I had to do to to actually manipulate it in the in the closer look. So there's no way I can do it in this condition. I have nothing to grab on to, to brace. So we're just not gonna do that. But yeah, um, there are some washers in here. You can see there's a stack of washers on this side. Uh, we have two here. Actually, there's three, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's three. Yeah, because there's definitely three on this side. So that's the spacer for the spring tension. I, I imagine you could actually take one of these washers out on each side at a time, or two at a time, basically, to keep it equal and maybe adjust the spring tension if you wanted to. The stops themselves, you can see these are actually carriage bolts. See a little square side on them and then the smooth piece on the top there. So he's using a carriage bolt, obviously it's going through this 10 millimeter thick plate and capturing it over here with that acorn nut. And yeah, so, and we have some socket head caps that are actually screwed into each side of the 15 millimeter thick shifter lever. So yeah, I, I like what I see in here. It's very neat. Uh, 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, this is a well-built shifter. You can tell that just from the, you know, all the metal parts. There's no 3D printed parts in here or anything like that. So yeah, uh, again, I, I can't really find too much fault with what I'm looking at here. I don't know about you guys. And again, we can see we have this cable gable assembly here holding our USB, but that's about it. Yeah. So yeah, that's it for the look inside of the SG Racing Sequential. Now for our inside look segment on the controller board or USB conversion board. So I have the screws already taken out on both sides here. And they are these little M3 units. You can see here, little socket head cap deals. And this is a 2.5 millimeter in case you ever have to do anything with the controller case. And as I said before, this is an injection molded type case. Now, usually I just take my fingernail and try to run it across the seams here to see what I'm dealing with. doesn't look like there's any glue or anything in here, so that's good. And I'll just keep kind of working around it until I can really see what's going on here. I don't want to damage anything, obviously, when we're doing this. Looks like the one's coming up. One side's kind of prying up there. Be very careful. All right. And when I'm opening it up, I try to open up like a book and look directly down in when I'm doing it to make sure there's nothing glued to the look to the either side here when I'm looking at where the wires are going. So I'm just going to kind of, there we go. Okay. Everything's clear. And there's that half. And inside we can see we have a circuit board and a USB connector. And this is a micro connector over here. And I'm going to, and you can see that the relief here that was cut into the case acts as a cable gable. Keep it from popping out. But I'm going to go ahead and take it out and disconnect it from this board if I can without hurting anything. Okay, we have the cable loose. Now I'll just very gently pull this cable out. There we go. Great. I don't want to put any stress on the wires where they're soldered. Now you can see the connectors here on the inside of that 9-pin connector. And he soldered three wires to it. So we got a ground power and a signal. Now this is a, see if I can get this open here without, again, hurting anything, a Pro Micro. And this is a very common board used in USB type conversion situations and for other things too. I mean, you can do a lot of stuff with this, this little Amtel chip that runs on here. It's the Mega 32U4 chip that a lot of guys use in their Arduino type projects. Right, so here it's being used in the USB conversion capacity. Very clean, neat little board. Uh, the soldering looks good in here. I'm just kind of looking at it. Yeah, it looks like it is. The solder's done well, and in fact, the solder's been trimmed down a little bit to keep everything nice and neat. So yeah, nice little board there. And this is a five volt board, by the way, running at 16 megahertz, I believe, last time I checked. Right. So not much else to see here on the look inside, right? Yeah. Pretty neat, pretty tidy. You really don't need much though for doing USB conversion. And I think these boards run about $16, $17 on Amazon. That includes like prime shipping or something. So yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a good all around board and a lot of people use these. There's a lot of them out there that there are people using all kinds of projects. So yeah, I approve of that. <laughs> Anything else I want to see here on the look inside? That's it. We've got the other micro USB plug on that side there. So yeah, not much to see, but uh, yeah, at least we had to, you know, I've got to go inside and look and see what's going on inside of these controller boxes when I get them into the SRG. Now it's time to get our shifter mounted. And I'm just going to go briefly over the mounting that came with this and options. This plate came, is a side mount plate, obviously, because we have the shifter on this side. And this is where our holes are that are going to match the profile. And the profile will go on like this. On the P1X, it'll be sitting like this, all right? Now this is kind of an offset, so it'll kick it towards me or the seat. Now, if it was too close, you could always kick it around this way or reverse it and put it that way. Because it doesn't matter which way you run the shifter because it's just backwards and for frontwards. It's just a sequential. So you could actually go either way with it. I'm pretty sure I'm going to end up with it like this though, based on some test fitting I've already done. Now, you also have options with these brackets. They make another bracket that is longer on the top here and longer on the bottom and doesn't have this piece. So this is gone. So it's like a one piece going just like this along the shifter bottom and extends out 
looks like 40, 50 millimeters on each side and has its own hole on one side and the other. And of course, that would mean we'd be mounting the shifter straight on the profile like this. So it'd be sitting right there. And that would be it. There would be no side mount, no offset or anything like that. Now, suppose you have a profile rig or a rig where you want to mount it vertical, like on the wheelbase support, as uprights as they come up, then they make a profile for that too, or actually a piece of aluminum bracket for that. And it comes out straight like this along the bottom, and then it will actually do an L or 90 degree bend up like this. And it'll have holes in it so you can mount that to the front of that upright that's coming up to, to support your wheelbase. And it, obviously it's got to come out far enough to clear these nuts right here. So there are other, other options for getting this thing mounted. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be pretty simple. And again, the hardware that they sent with this, we have our countersunk holes in here, which are nice because we, then we can take our flathead M8 bolts and put them in there like that. And they're flush and don't get any way. You might want to put something on top of this or use this for something else. Who knows? So even though a regular M8 socket head cap would also work here. And the nuts that we get, these T-nuts, are like this. They have a spring T-nut, which is a good T-nut. It's a good steel T-nut. I mean, there's nothing wrong with this. But I am going to be using the T-nuts I usually run on all my profile. And that's the ones that have that tab or raised section that run the length of the top of that T-nut. And that is for locking this T-nut into the profile channel, right? So when I put this in here like this, it will follow the contours of the channel. And if you slowly tighten this up, when you tighten these T-nuts, don't push them down real hard while you're, you're tightening them up, you'll actually be able to pull them up against this channel on the bottom part. In other words, this bottom lip under here, all right? And that just gives it a little extra security from twisting. Now this one will also work without any problems. This will go in just like this, but there's no channel, as you can see, to keep it located. There's no tab on the top to keep it located in the channel, which is no big deal at the end of the day. But what will usually ends up with these kind of T-nuts when you tighten them down, if I had this nut in here and was tightening it down for final tighten, they do have a tendency. Now this one's not doing it because it's got the bevel on it. It's the flat. This is a bad example. <laughs> so if it was a straight cat socket, cap though, it has a tendency when you do the final tightening to shift a little bit. Let's see if I can duplicate that. See there, there we go. See how it shifts? But only as far as, it'll only shift as far as the hole. See, it, it shifted too far there because it didn't have the bolt in it. But it still can twist a little bit. Here, that won't happen if you, if you torque it down correctly, slowly, and then when finish your final torque once you have it screwed all the way down. Right. So that's about it. That's the only different thing I'm going to do. I'm still going to use these flat heads because you never know about what you might want to do with something, putting something on the top of that. Who knows? And yeah, it's going to be pretty simple. So all that's left to do now is go ahead and take this thing over to the P1X where the shifter lever assembly is already on and we'll mount it up. And yeah, when we come back, we'll see what that looks like. All right. So I have the shifter mounted now to the shifter assembly that comes with the P1X. And you can see that it is on the 40 series side of the 4080 profile. And that's just the way everything mounts to this. And yeah, the countersunk holes in the flathead screws are looking good. If I get down low here, you can see how that works. Really nice. And in this case, this offset is working, but you can see that I'm really close to my seat here, aren't I? <laughs> and that's because this is a wider seat. This is my Pixma seat and my Sparco seat is more narrow than this. So if I wanted to go any lower than this, it would have hit the seat side. I could move the seat over a little bit to clear it, but I think in some cases you're going to want, instead of this bracket, it's wide like this, you're going to want this just to be a single bracket over here. We could move this whole shifter over and then we'd have no clearance issues no matter what seat you run on this particular profile. So yeah, it's again, it depends on your situation. And I've actually turned the shifter around because I wanted the USB cable to run out the front. So that's what it's doing there. And other than that, yeah, everything went smooth, just as smoothly as I thought it would. And I will shift over to a different angle here and show you guys it actually working. And you know, it, it looks like there's more push to it now than there was on the bench when I was using it. So that's one of those things that, you know, you really don't know until you get it on the rig itself or you get it mounted. And it's mounted pretty solidly. You can see it's really not moving. 
any movement you see might be in the chassis in general because of the motion system I'm running has dampeners in the bottom of where the feet go onto the concrete floor, the rubber. So they kind of, it moves around a little bit. But yeah, it doesn't move very far, but you can really smack it up against those stops with no fear. I mean, this is, this is all metal, it's heavy duty. So this is something I can wail on and just kind of pop like that and not worry about it. <laughs> and that's what I'll be doing for a while. So we'll see how it holds up. But yeah, I have 100% confidence that uh, the way this thing is, this thing is built like a tank. It's not going to have any problem at all. Plus, you know, with this nice thick shifter lever on here, everything just comes together quite well for this shifter, I have to say. I just, I just like the way it works. But anyway, we won't know for sure until we're in the car running. And that's what we'll be doing next. So we're in iRacing in the Holden Super V8 car. I thought it was a fitting car to be riding around Sebring in. And you see how it is really a true sequential shifter car. And I'm banging out some gears here as we go down the gears to make our hairpin turn here. Now, the first thing you notice about this shifter, if you have it mounted very solidly, so there's no flex in the mount, which I have here, this thing is rock solid right now. It's a very good shifter as far as tactile feedback. When you're banging against those metal stops, remember this is metal to metal on the stops, which is similar to what you would have in a lot of sequential shifters because you're just, you know, you're ramming that lever and it's all it's doing is turning a gear which turns it against another piece of metal. So there's, there's metal through the whole train of actuating a sequential shifter. So this feels true to life as far as that's concerned, I think. And you can really bang on it hard, which I was doing. I just tend to be a little rough with stuff. Uh, it's just my driving style. And so, you know, never had a problem with it. Never missed a shift. Yeah, it's just one of those things was just plug and play right out of the, right as soon as I was driving out of the pit, I was going, yeah, this is, this is a very solid unit. This feels like you're manipulating something in a real car, which of course adds to the immersion factor. Now you'll notice on this shifter that the throws aren't really long, but they're just long enough, I think. I think they're right in that sweet spot. It's moving, and I actually measured this from the very top of the handle, it's actually moving 25 millimeters forward and backwards with every shift. So that's about an inch. And that felt, you know, realistic to me. It just felt like it should feel at the end of the day. Similar to another long handled or long levered sequential shifter that I use as my usual one. So yeah, it doesn't move that much, but it feels very convincing to me that I'm, I'm making a shift here and yeah, it's, it's just one of those things that's just natural. As soon as you start using it, you're happy with it as far as the performance goes. And really this all comes back to, you know, moving 25 millimeters, but the very bottom of that lever is not moving very much at all. But yeah, we're at 13 inches high on the, where that top of that knob is. And that's 335 millimeters. So because it's that height, it obviously translates a little bit of movement at the bottom is a lot more at the top by the time we get to the top of that lever up there. But yeah, again, it's just one of those things that, you know, once you're using it right away, it just felt kind of like at home and that I was, was feeling like I could be in a car with a sequential shifter and actually using its shifter at this point. And really, at the end of the day, that's what this is supposed to do. And I think really what we have here is the build elements, the construct of this shifter will allow it to perform as well as it does. And I really wasn't thinking it would be that much when I was looking at pictures of this shifter on the internet. But it's just one of those things. As soon as I took it out of the box, I knew that you know whoever built this, the guys at SG Racing, really wanted to have a solid, long-lasting, robust shifter. And that's really what they have here. You can bang on this thing all day long. It'll wear your hand out and your arm out before it will ever ask for any kind of a break. It's just one of those things you know is going to last and yet it just felt comfortable being in the car with it. I really, you know, I was looking for something to complain about here, but I, I don't have any on this shifter. I mean, I think anyone, as long as you can, now this is the caveat here, as long as you can mount this thing very solidly, all right, that's very important. But that goes with a lot of our sim racing hardware peripherals. I've said it in many videos, you've got to mount these things as hard, you know, as solid as a rock if you can get it there because any flex takes away from that tactile feedback that I'm feeling right now because of the solid mount. It all comes together. And it couldn't be as solid as a mount if they didn't provide that six mil, over six millimeter or like a quarter inch aluminum plate to bolt to your profile or whatever other rig that you're running. So again, 
just one of those things that has exceeded my expectations and not too many things do that at the SRG when I when I pull them out of the box you know I, I kind of manage the expectations properly but this one actually exceeded a little bit more than I thought it would even the shifting action I was a little little you know wary of because it wasn't moving very far when I had it on the bench if you saw the closer look it just wasn't moving very far I was thinking I'm not sure how this is going to feel when I'm actually driving it but you know I was proven wrong I, it turns out that I do like the way it feels and yeah it just comes together as a complete unit this is a 170 euro or 200 dollar shifter so it's not a cheap type of shifter or ex as far as expense goes but I tell you what it's not real expensive either as far as shifters go and this one is worth the money to me. It's just one of those ones that, yeah, you see where the money went here, and it kind of, like I said, it, it meets expectations of the price point, and then some a little bit, I think, kind of punching above its weight here. Final thoughts on the sequential shifter from SG Racing. The first time you lay hands on this shifter, you can tell it was built to last. It is constructed from solid aluminum plates. The side plates are 8 millimeters thick, with the spreader plates on each end coming in at 10 millimeters thick. The shifting lever is a confidence-inspiring 15 millimeters thick and 25 millimeters wide, topped off with a solid aluminum knob that has nicely done high-grip knurling cut into it. SG Racing includes an aluminum mounting bracket that is over 6 millimeters thick. This all comes together to give the driver a very solid feeling shifter. Once I had one of these side plates removed, you can see that the guys at SG Racing wanted the internals to last a long time too. The large shifting lever rotates on a nice looking bronze bushing. The stiff steel springs that provide shifting tension are riding on an 8 millimeter diameter steel rod. The stops are made from smooth shanked carriage bolts, which bump into some socket head cap bolts that are screwed into the shifting lever. This provides a very stiff stop and good tactile feedback when making shifts. All this is bolted to the 10 millimeter thick end plates. I like the way this lets the driver smack the shifter back and forth with minimal concerns of causing any damage when driving hard. And when you can drive the sim racing shifter this hard, it is a great addition to the overall immersion experience. For the electronics, this shifter uses switches that have rollers on their levers. Another feature that should add to overall functional durability. The USB conversion duties are performed by a Pro Micro Atmega 32U4 development circuit board, a very commonly used and proven board for this type of application. Of course, when you have all these parts bolted together, mounted securely and stiffly to your rig, you will get a great feeling sequential shifter. I found the spring tension to be appropriate for this application. It gave me a sense of actually making a shift when used. After banging on this shifter for a few hours, I could not detect any loss in feel or performance. When using the SG sequential shifter, I could not find any real bad habits. It just got the job done with no dramas. This shifter sells for 170 euros or around $200 plus shipping.
Once I was able to spend some quality time with it, I personally think that you do get what you pay for here, and maybe just a little bit more. I'm Barry Rowland. Thanks again for watching the Sim Racing Garage channel. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you would like to help support what I do here at the SRG, visit my website at simracinggarage.com.